Okay, so uh, we're going to move on to Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> I always object to uh, the type one and type two diabetes being called the same diabetes. And it just creates so much confusion. People just d don't know the differences. And um, uh, as a type one, I, I, I genuinely object to it. I think we should come up with, with, with a different, different yeah. name for the two conditions. And now type three diabetes to add to the confusion, that's Alzheimer's. So let's just call it Alzheimer's disease. It, it it is a lot more prevalent now than it ever was. Am, yes, am I sorry? And it's, it's, yeah, it's, I don't remember as many d d d elderly people with dementia around me. Um, I would say maybe 50 or 40 years ago, I don't remember. When I was a child, I do not remember. Maybe people died earlier at an earlier age. I, I don't know. So what do we know so far about Alzheimer's? Yeah, you're you're right. I think part part of the reason why there's it, it's there's more of it now is um, the the baby boomer generation. We have more older people now. We have a greater number of people reaching older age, but it's um, it is becoming more prevalent regardless because it's affecting people at younger ages now. This isn't exclusive to the elderly people. So something is changing in the diet and the environment somewhere that people are being afflicted now in their 50s and 60s. You know, this used to be, we would say, oh, grandpa's getting senile or that. And it's, it's happening every younger now. And I wanna kind of set the stage for this by saying, you know, you started off saying we could talk about each of these conditions separately. And I do think that epilepsy is separate, but when you look at Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's and MS and ALS and all of the rest, what all of them have in common, and nobody's talking about this, all of them have in common a problem where the neurons in the brain or the central nervous system, these cells are not getting fuel. They are not able to metabolize glucose properly. So they sort of, um, I, I call it like a fuel shortage or an energy crisis in the neurons. So of course, these neurons are going to start to atrophy and there's going to be degeneration. It's as if the brain is starving. They have, all of them have, they call it neuronal hypometabolism. Mm -hmm. Hypometabolism meaning not enough energy. Mm -hmm. And um, like you said, they, they call Alzheimer's disease type three diabetes. And where that comes from is this brain glucose shortage problem and, and type two diabetes and uh, metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance are major risk factors for developing this in older age. So that could, that's probably the main reason why we see it happening so much more because how many more millions of people now have type two diabetes or insulin resistance? Millions. Yes. Yes. Well, isn't it um, eight out of 10? in the United States alone? Uh, I don't, well, that, that, that's, I, think, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that study. I know that what, there's a study that said 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy. Yes. I don't know if it's that high, but it's, it is certainly well into the many, many millions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is, I think what makes it scarier is that people are exhibiting symptoms or early symptoms from their forties you know, even 30s, I was reading yeah. recent research and that- well, So that's, that's something. something that people need to know, you know, in, in type one, I know it's kind of different, but in type two, they are now saying, you know, when your blood sugar starts to rise, that's a late symptom. By the time your blood sugar starts to rise measurably, your insulin may have been high for up to 20 years, like keeping that glucose in check. So you could have these metabolic problems working in your body for about 20 years before you get diagnosed. And in Alzheimer's, when I said the brain is not taking up and using glucose properly, this is measurable in people in their 30s and 40s. People who are at risk, who have a certain gene or have a family history, they can see that in people at that young the brain is already not taking up and using as much glucose as a healthy person's brain. But those people don't have any signs and symptoms. They're still healthy enough. The brain is compensating, but it, it's only when the problem is so severe 
and widespread that the, it's not able to compensate anymore. That's when you start showing the problems, but it's, that doesn't happen overnight. It's not like one day you woke up and all of a sudden had Alzheimer's. This problem grows very, very slowly for a long time until it reaches that tipping point where you, st and, but that's what people need to know. This isn't the time to prevent it, or I, the way to say it really is to reduce risk because we don't know for certain that we can prevent it. The time to start reducing your risk is now, is at as young as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense if the body's becoming more and more unable to metabolize or use glucose for energy, why don't we switch the fuel source here? Let's switch it to ketones, right? I mean, it's it's a simple. It's kind of it's a it's a it is a simple mechanism if you think about it. Mm -hmm.